Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Welcome to Luminous and to Mary Immaculate Catholic Church at Ashmore, at Queensland, Australia, on the Gold Coast of Australia. I'm Father Jared McMorrow. I'm the parish priest. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about um, Eucharist, and particularly in the context of St. John's Gospel. And I'd like to read to you a short little passage and then explain the passage in the context of the text. The passage of scripture I'd like to read for you today is from John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 12 to 15. When he had washed their feet, he put his clothes again and went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example that you may copy what I have done to you. If you're a Catholic or a Christian, you're familiar with Eucharist, probably in your receptive churches. And the word Eucharist actually means to give thanks. And it's um, where we as Catholics um, celebrate each Sunday, in a sense, the day of the Lord. There was a famous Catholic theologian who said, a man called Lucien Dios, he's a French theologian around the time of the Second Vatican Council. He said, every Sunday is the great Easter and every Easter is the great Sunday. And it really puts into context what we actually celebrate when we come to Mass on Sunday. And I'd like to focus particularly on John because I think John sets the theology and the pastoral sense in how we should live out our lives as a Eucharistic community and the Eucharistic community here in this church here at Mary Immaculate. What's interesting about John is that John does not give us what we call the institution narrative. That is, when Jesus sat at table with his disciples and he said, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in memory of me. So when we come to John's Gospel, John's context of Eucharist comes to its fulfillment in John chapter 13, verse one down to 15, it was before the festival of Passover and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and he had come from God and was returning to God. He got up from table removed his outer garment and taken a towel, wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. They are clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet, he put his clothes again back on, went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. In the Synoptic Gospels and in the New Testament, we have four accounts of the institution of the, of the Eucharist. The oldest account comes from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. 
followed by the account in Mark, and then in Matthew and Luke. What's interesting is that John doesn't give us that institution narrative of this is my body and this is my blood. To understand Eucharist, I think it's important that we put it into its context. When Jesus sat at table that night with his disciples, he was celebrating what was known as the Jewish Passover. It was an annual festival celebrated once a year, and it celebrated Israel's freedom from slavery in Egypt. And I think this is very important for us to remember. So when the Jewish people celebrate Passover, they're not just celebrating some historical event that happened for them now maybe 4,000 years ago, or for a Jesus in his time, 2,000 years. But what they are celebrating is their own liberation from Egypt. To put it into this context, whatever in life that keeps us in somehow in bondage, as uh, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it to the full. God wants all of us as human beings to live life to the full. The way we can live life to the full is when we live it in God, when we live it in service to God and service to each other. That's what he means by living life to the full. What's interesting is that when the Jewish people celebrate Passover, as I said, it's not some historical event, but it's whatever God can do in my life and whatever keeps me from truly being the person that God wants me to be. That's liberation, to be able to move from whatever enslaves me. It could be alcohol, it could be dr drugs, it could be anything. Whatever truly stops me from being the person God wants me to be. So when the Jewish people celebrate Passover, they're asking God to liberate them to freedom. Now Passover was an annual festival that was celebrated, and it's where we get our celebration from Easter from. So Jesus, as being a good Jew, fulfilling what was prescribed that was laid down to celebrate Passover with his disciples, he did something extraordinary at that meal. Before he began the meal, he got up from table, he took this bowl of water, and he went round to each one of his friends, and he began to wash their feet. Now, I suppose, if, um, when we use the word table, it's really important, because in the ancient world, he wouldn't have been sitting at a table as such. It was known as a triclinium, which meant that the person of honor would sit on one end towards on the right-hand side, and people would be gathered round with the food in the center. And Jesus get, get, takes off his outer garment, he takes a bowl of water, he goes round to each one of his friends, and he begins the foot washing. And of course, when he comes to Simon Peter, as I'm sure if he came to a group of men that were in a room, they wouldn't be too happy with somebody washing their feet, they began to protest. But Jesus was teaching them something very important. And when even after Simon protested, he said, Simon, just leave it for now, let me do this. And when he went back to table, he says, you call me Lord and Master, and rightly so I am. So if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, then you in turn must go and wash each other's feet. And I think what John is teaching us, that Eucharist, to give thanks to God, to celebrate what we celebrate, as uh, a famous French theologian rightly described Eucharist, our, our Sunday Mass, he said, every Mass, every Sunday is the great Easter, and every Easter is the great Sunday. So to put that in context for us, that I think that when we come to celebrate Eucharist, it's really important that we come with a right disposition, that we know what we're celebrating. It's important that when we break the bread and the wine on this altar, and it becomes for us the body and blood of Christ, but there's an important lesson in here in this for us, it's because Jesus is saying to us that we too need to become the body and blood of Christ. It's what we have received, we become. And we do that by being Christ to others. We do that in how we live out our daily life. It's how I spoke about prayer. Prayer should never be, um, it's not just something we do once a week, but it should influence everything we do for the rest of the week in a sense that when we break bread on this table here and we walk out the door of the church, then we are asked and called by Christ to become his disciples, to become his hands, his feet, 
his mouth, his ears to the world outside. So Eucharist is not just something with static. We just don't, after Mass, take the bread that's left over, the body of Christ, and put it into the tabernacle. That's well and good, and that's lovely, and it's great for private prayer and devotion. But there is another command that's called of us, and that is for us to become the body and blood of Christ as we leave this church, to be Christ's voice in the world outside. And I think that what John beautifully does for us, he puts that into context that we ourselves are the body and blood of Christ as we live our daily lives in the world outside. In a sense, as Jesus beautifully put it, he says, we become the salt of the earth. We become the city that's built on the hilltop. We become the light of the world in how we live our lives and in how we demonstrate what it means to be Catholic, what it means to be Christian in the world outside. So, I think that John gives us a beautiful example of what it really means to live Eucharist. Let me put it this way to you. What does it mean to wash somebody else's feet? I don't think Jesus meant that we had to actually physically go and wash somebody else's feet. But I think what Jesus wants us to be in a sense is that, you know, when I was a child growing up in the west of Ireland, my parents used to say, Jared, you were made in God's image and likeness. And it took me a long time to figure out how I was made in God's image and likeness. And really, it's not very, very complex. In fact, I think it takes another human being to mold you and shape you into God's image and likeness. When I look back in my life, it was my parents who taught me justice, who taught me compassion, who taught me mercy, who taught me forgiveness. Oh, by the way, I'm still working on those attributes. But I think that that's what God calls all of us to be. So when you leave the church and when you live your life, how can you wash somebody else's feet? Well, I think it's in the way we serve each other. And I think service is a better word for love because service puts everything into context. It's how we treat each other, it's how we respect each other, and it's how we care for each other. And I don't think God calls us to great and great things. But in the words of um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, I think she gives us a beautiful example. She says, God doesn't call us to great things, but that God does call us to love greatly in small things. And I think small things are important. And we can truly be a Eucharistic community and live out Eucharist by being Christ to others in how we live our lives and how we care for each other and how we support each other and, um, and how we conduct our life. I think God calls all of us to be decent human beings and Eucharist sets the standard for us. In conclusion, I'd like to finish with a small prayer taken from the Gospel, from John 14. And Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. And it's in Christ we place our trust and we pray. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you and God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Salon World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you you are involved to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.